in Los Angeles. And this is CNN. A group of students now suing Yale University and its governing body, alleging that Yale discriminated against students with mental health disabilities, even allegedly forcing those with severe mental health disability symptoms to withdraw from the school. CNN's Miguel Marquez has the story. Declaimed in a new lawsuit seeking class action status, Yale University discriminated against students with mental health disabilities alleging that Yale's withdrawal policies and practices push students with mental health disabilities out of Yale, and if they try to get back in, they face unreasonable burdens. The lawsuit coming shortly after a Washington Post investigation relying on interviews of more than 25 current and former Yale students. One student telling the Post she suffered a sexual assault, eventually attempting suicide, then feeling forced to withdraw from the university. Another account in the Washington Post, a 20-year-old math major who had already withdrawn once, posted on Facebook, Dear Yale, I loved being here. I only wish I could have had some time. I needed time to work things out and to wait for new medication to kick in. But I couldn't do it in school, and I couldn't bear the thought of having to leave for a full year, or of leaving and never being readmitted. Her fear so great of not being allowed in a second time, she died by suicide in 2015. Yale says it made some changes to its policies, but those bringing the lawsuit say it's not enough. In a statement, Yale said, our primary focus is on student safety and health, especially when they are most vulnerable. We have taken steps in recent years to simplify the return to Yale for students on medical withdrawals and to provide additional support for students. The university is confident that our policies comply with all applicable laws and regulations. Nonetheless, we have been working on policy changes that are responsive to students' emotional and financial well-being. Miriam Hyman, who wrote a 2018 white paper on mental health in the Ivy League for the Rutterman Family Foundation, which is cited in the lawsuit, says Yale is not alone when it comes to failing to accommodate students with mental health disabilities. Prior to COVID, experts have sort of labeled what's happening on college campuses as a, as a mental health crisis. National data has shown that as many as 40% as of undergraduates within a given year um, have felt so depressed within that year that it was difficult for them to function. Um, and colleges in general across the country are lack the basic infrastructure, infrastructure to support students' mental health. The problem widespread, a Washington Post analysis of data from the Healthy Minds Network indicated nationwide student rates of depression, anxiety, and suicidal thoughts more than doubled between 2013 and 2021. And a 2021 report from Penn State's Center for Collegiate Mental Health found that funding isn't keeping pace with demand for mental health services, that the yearly average caseload for a college counselor is about 90 students, with some centers reporting an average of above 300 students per counselor. This issue has now caught the attention of Congress as well. Senator Edward Markey has sent a letter to the Department of Education and Department of Justice asking them to issue guidance and policy reforms to protect access to higher education for students and to strengthen non-discrimination protections for students who may need medical leave. This was a massive issue before the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, that only made it worse. Laura? Miguel Marquez, thank you so much. Now I want to bring in Monica Porter, an attorney for the Bazelon Center for Mental Health Law, and Rishi Merchandani, a Yale alumnus and a plaintiff in this lawsuit. You know, when we hear about what's going on, Rishi, Monica, I mean, just hearing in the, in the discussion from Miguel how heart-wrenching it is to think about the choices that students have had to make. And Rishi, you withdrew in 2018 um, and after a mental health crisis, you did describe some trouble in being allowed to return. You eventually did graduate, but talk to me about what your personal experience was like in grappling with the policies that you say Yale had. Absolutely. Um, thank you so much for asking and it's really, amazing to be able to share this experience that's been so difficult for me and so many others over decades. Um, when I was dealing with my mental health crisis, I felt like Yale was presenting me with a stark binary choice. I could either continue with a full 
full-time schedule at Yale and all of the ch challenges that would come with, or I would have to commit to an extended absence um, in which I would have to give up university health insurance, on-campus housing, and every manner of institutional support that I had. That choice made things so difficult. And that, what I didn't understand that at the time is I had the federally protected right to have more options on the table. Mm -hmm. um, reasonable accommodations are critical to the way that mental health practices are, are properly achieved on campus. Looking at this now, Rishi, do you have any idea as to why you thought, maybe at the time compared to now, that you believe Yale was making these challenging or having these hurdles in place? There are a number of different reasons. I think that Yale tends to wash its hands off cases of mental illness that are too severe because they don't want to be associated with that student, right? Mm -hmm. They want the student to deal with their issues anywhere except Yale's campus. Um, and in some instances, taking time off is, is a healthy decision. In other cases, it separates students from their primary support group. And so it really has to be a more case-by-case -case evaluation of what's best for the student, rather than a one-size-fits-all approach of, if you're really struggling, you need to get out. I mean, Monica, I'm thinking about the choices, and for a lot of people, they might not realize that there is some right to having a, a menu of options in terms of how to have that support system, how it's structured, and what you are entitled to or not on, say, a college campus and a private institution like that. You, you, in the lawsuit, focus on um, Yale's, quote, withdrawal policies, you say, and practices that push students with mental health disabilities out of Yale. Talk to me about what students are up against. And again, this is an issue obviously focused in this lawsuit on Yale, but we cannot think of this in a vacuum. The issues that are being presented are likely far more universal, which is very scary at a lot of campuses. That's absolutely right. As was said earlier, this is part of a national issue. Uh, one in five American adults experience mental health disabilities and suicide is a leading cause of death among college students. At the Babylon Center, we receive calls from students and parents all over the country. We've been doing research and collecting data on campus mental health issues nationwide and using that to inform the policy change that we advocate for on a national level. We have found Yale to be a particularly egregious example. Um, there are a lot of tricky facets to this issue, but as Rishi said, it can't be a blanket policy. It needs to be addressing each student case individually and exploring all reasonable accommodations as per federal law before resulting to something like exclusion. So is the goal of the lawsuit, I mean, obviously, you know, a lot of litigation takes place behind closed doors. People are often incentivized to be a little bit quiet and hushed about things. And you have non-disclosures and the like come into play. Is the goal of this litigation to be able to have and effectuate and implement more of a widespread approach that other universities could use as a blueprint? Certainly. This case is seeking to... Uh, have status as a class action so that we can represent mm -hmm. all of Yale students with mental health disabilities who have been harmed or who do fear the potential to be harmed by these policies in the future. And what we're seeking here and why it is so brave of Rishi and other students, current and former, to be participating in this lawsuit is that no one is seeking any sort of monetary gain. Mm -hmm. Purely this lawsuit is seeking systemic policy change to make improvements for all Yale students moving forward. Certainly our hope is that we can engage with experts and create Yale to uh, help Yale to become uh, what can be an example for schools nationwide. Rishi, your bravery requires the last word. What is your message to students? We're looking at you right now and hopeful. Yeah, well, I want students to know that we care about them and we are taking these actions in the court of law out of sincere loyalty and love for the Yale community. Um, and we want students to know that there, there is a possibility of light at the end of the tunnel graduating and being able to support others. 
Rishi and Marchandani and Monica. Thank you so much, Monica Porter. I appreciate your time. Thank you. When we come back, a new study that could change your work life.